Hey y'all. <laughs> it's been a little, it's been a little second. Although I am still on break. Y'all know I had to do me a recap episode. So hey y'all, if you're new here, feel free to call me Brand. Well, my name is Brandy, but feel free to call me Brand. I love when people call me that. So before I jump into the episode, a few weeks back, I do have to talk about it. Um, If you guys are familiar with my guest, Drew, that I had on a few months back, she has her own nonprofit and she held another event um, about almost two weeks ago. And it was amazing. It was a healing workshop. Everybody was in the room crying. I felt cleansed after I left. So Drew, shout out to you for creating a safe space for all of us. Um, It was really phenomenal. And what you're doing is phenomenal. And I know you're going to listen to this. I hope you cry. (laughs) Nah, (laughs) not like in a bad way. Good tears, of course. But nah, I want you to know that like, I don't know. I feel like you're walking in your purpose. And I I see that it radiates off of you. So that's super dope. Thank you for that space. Um, So while I was there, I did speak for a second. Um, And I want to speak on what I realized while I was there. And I talked about it. If you, you know, if you were at the event. It was super cool. Like the last time I talked at an event was right before COVID happened. Like it was like that January of uh, COVID. And I spoke at my first event and oddly enough, it was, it was a hair event. And afterwards I was having conversations about me starting a podcast. And I've talked about this um, on my episode with Lalique as well. And it was just surreal to be in the moment, like two years later, like doing what I said I was gonna do. I always feel so good when I execute something that I said that I was gonna do. So in a way, like, although I don't know where I'm going with my podcast, I gotta get out of my head with that. Like, maybe it can make me money one day. Maybe it can't. I just know that I enjoy doing this. So I know for this, I know I have a voice for something and I know this is the start of it. And I feel like I'm walking in my purpose in that aspect. And that's cool. Um, so if you are one of the people that just started listening that was at that event, um, which I've told you separately, I just want you to know again, like I am going to reach out to you within a few weeks. I'm still currently on break, setting the tone for like what I want my podcast to look like next year, but I'm super excited to have a lot more guests on next year. That is super exciting. And also at that event, um, I did do a little segment. So if you listen to some of my guest episodes, typically a theme question I like to ask is what would you tell your younger self? So I did ask a few people that at the event. So I am going to insert that right about now. I would tell my younger self to take your time. It's no rush. And to love yourself and, and that you got it. It's in you. It's already in you. That's it. That I am enough. I would tell my younger self to express how I feel at all times, um, no matter how others feel about it, um, and to not censor my feelings. Okay, I'm back. So that was a super cool thing to do, and I and I'm happy that people actually wanted to do it. So yes, shout out to y'all. Um, again, amazing adventure. So (laughs) y'all know. I'm ready to get into it, okay? (laughs) So what I'm talking about is really all the things that I learned this year, and then I'll talk a little bit about what I want for me next year. And I can't wait to check in with myself around this time next year to just see what I've done. Um, Now, firstly, I would like to say, (laughs) no, I'm not being negative. No negative. I'm working on not complaining as much, but I am going to speak some facts, okay? One, this year came in swinging, okay? Um, Yeah, it came in, honestly, the beginning of this year feels like two lifetimes ago. Like, I can't even believe that that some of the stuff that happened this year. Then we got to, like, mid-ish year. I'm like, all right, we slowing down a little bit. Now, this this year trying to go out with a bang. I literally be looking, looking around, like, am I being punk? Am I being tested? Because, like, wow, like, wow, like, life? Be easy on yourself, guys, because some days with life, yeah, I know how y'all feel because I'll be feeling like that too. Um, So I've just been trying to take this time to like listen to my body. And oddly enough, I saw this TikTok the other day. (laughs) Um, But he was just talking about like, like 
the time of year and like, you know, where the season is at and how it's getting darker early, like basically knowing when it's time to rest, you know, sometimes we get caught up in like trying to accomplish all these things. Gotta do this, gotta do this. But it's like, when do you have the time to rest? And when do you not feel guilty about resting? So also I'm trying to keep that in mind as well. I'm trying to slow my pace a bit and just really sit back and think and figure out like, okay, what are, what do I want my life to look like a little bit next year? Oddly enough, y'all, I made a vision board and I've always been against vision boards. Let me tell you why. Because I am not an arts and craft type of girl. I am not cutting out no pictures. Like I'm just not. So someone just told me to search um, Canva and I was like, oh, I can make one up here. So you guys should go make one. Um, you will have to play with the background a little bit um, if you want to set it as your phone background. But I set it as my phone background, um, my home screen. So every time I open my phone, I see my vision board. Sorry, my cat. Every time I'm doing something, she over here trying to scratch me. So that's pretty dope. So I'm trying to I'm trying to set my tone. And some of the things that I've been working on, I've been working on. It's crazy. Time be flying. It's been a few months now. So I don't feel bad Like if I go into the new year. And I don't start a thing. Because sometimes, like, yeah, the new year is a reset. But sometimes we make ourselves feel guilty. You be like, dang, I said I was going to start this. And then it's like, dang, I didn't start that thing. And then you feel discouraged to start the things that you said you that that you were going to start just because, what, a month has passed of the year or, like, because the first has passed or a few weeks has passed. Like, we don't, as a society, I feel like we make certain things a norm. And that doesn't have to be that. So to prepare myself, I, I have started working on some of these, some of the things that I want to work on. Um and that makes me feel good because I've been being very consistent with some of those things. And I don't feel pressure because I have started some of them already. So that's pretty cool. So let's get into it. What did I learn this year? One, I need to embrace myself for who I who I am. Like I'm figuring out who I am, but and also for who I'm becoming. For the longest time. <laughs> You know, I've always presented myself to the world with this hard exterior, and I don't need to do that. I don't, well, I do know why I felt like that. We ain't gonna get, we ain't gonna, I'm trying not to keep it heavy this episode, okay? But it's like, nah, Brandy, like, it's okay to let your guard down or just dig into my softness. I'm not saying that soft girl error shit, but I do have a soft side. Like, some months back, somebody said to me, um, I want you to, and I may not be saying this right verbatim, um, damn, now I'm drawing a blank on it. But basically, in regards to me being soft, like, basically, they want me to be able to feel like I can do that. And yeah, (laughs) so I've been trying to get in touch with the more, I don't want to say quote unquote girly side, but I think the things that I have strayed away from that I think I actually like but I haven't leaned into for whatever reason because I got to be like, ooh, like uh, like all the time, you know what I'm saying? Like, it don't got to be that. So that's been pretty cool. And what comes with that, and I talked a little bit about that on my last episode with Lamique. If you haven't listened to part two of our, of our conversation, please go listen to it. But, you know, figuring out the things that I really like, and that's been really cool because it's like trial and error, but it's just fun, like, figuring those things out. So I've been playing with my style a little bit. Um, that's been super cool. Just matching different things, putting a little bit of pink in my wardrobe. So yeah, I'm finding myself in a different way and that feels good. Um, the next thing also did talk about this in my last episode a little bit, but I don't always trust myself. I don't like, I always, and it's so crazy. I got an, I might have an example for a lot of these things. So y'all, if it gets a little long, my bad, but I was talking to my friend a few weeks back. And she was like, you know, you always do that thing. I'm like, what thing? She she's, she said, you know what you want, but you hesitate. But you already know the answer. I'm like, shit. <laughs> I do do that. So that's that with me. And like, I, you know, you just got that feeling of like, nah, like that's not it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or no, I want that. Or I want to do that. But what's my hesitation? Right? So I've been working on trusting myself more. Um, learning that letting go is okay. It's okay to let go of things that no longer serve you, but also knowing, because a lot of people do not talk about, is that you grieve. You grieve what was with 
a lot of things. And that's hard because it's kind of like, it's kind of like conflicting, right? It's like, I know I should not do that thing anymore, talk to that person anymore, do that activity anymore because I'm not really interested or whatever the case may be. But why do I feel bad about it? But also we don't have to question why we feel bad about it because you grieve it, right? Because it's, if, if it was something that's been a part of your, your life for a long time, you know, that was your world and now it's not, you know? So I think that's very important. Next, um, I need, I learned that building new relationships are okay. It's okay to feel like you're getting close to somebody that just recently came into your life and form a friendship with them because why not? Um, and not saying I wasn't open to those things, but like a part of me is like always kind of reserved when, when building a new form of friendship with somebody. And no, I wouldn't say I have trust issues. Um, I think I have an issue with sometimes, I don't know who you are. <laughs> like, what if you do someone so to me? But also I have to know if I am trusting like my quote unquote vibe with somebody, like I have to trust that and, but also use discern- discernment when getting to know them. But also know if I'm choosing to do that friendship thing, that that's okay. That's what I'm choosing to do. Next, I've been trying to live in my moments more slash stop worrying because I'm worried just takes over a lot of things. It's like you can be somewhere doing something and it's just like, yo, why am I thinking about like a thing that don't matter right now in this moment? Like, why am I not here right now? And that's why I've been practicing in my meditation practices as well. Um, So that's been really cool. And like the times that I have like adapted that um recently i'm like wow that felt good like i was not thinking about all the shitty things that are going on in my life granted i am grateful to be here okay but yeah some shit is going on i'm just like (sighs) i want to tell you a quick tip the sadness almost took me over last week it almost got me out of here it almost got positive brain out of here but i was like no so we back this week but listen it it's literally always you against you literally And sometimes we have the choice to just let something consume us and go there and deep dive and get lost in our emotions. Or we have the choice to truly feel them, accept the situation for what it is, if it's something we can't control, and fix our mindset on how we deal with it on a day-to-day basis. Ooh, look at me with the word. (laughs) But really, look at me with the word. And I'm talking. I'm talking to myself. Like as I say these things, I, I I talk through a lot of these thoughts in my head, y'all. So I'm so happy that I can articulate these very well. As y'all can, I have very much grown on my podcast. Like although I still have times where I'm all over the place, but it's cool to see like how I can actually get my thoughts out. Like when I'm not as scatterbrained. So another thing I've been working on is keeping my space cleaner. Now, granted, I wasn't like a messy, messy girl. <laughs> but like I used to be mm, we still working on it but nothing terrible like neat clean like so slightly messy but like with the sometimes when you got clothes on your bed or like it's just too many shoes on the floor and like I realize like when my space is cluttered like my mind is just so much more cluttered and I am not I think I just want to walk with clarity in every aspect of my life in my mind like we gotta unjumble that shit we got to. So that's, I've been doing that. Next, it's okay for me to say no when something is off. And that goes back to me trusting myself more. Yo, if I feel this little inkling of something, then no, I have to opt out. And I can slide that into my people pleasing. Y'all, I did not realize how deep that runs within me. Not eat, not, it just runs with work-wise. It runs with, actually just, I feel like, in a way, in all the relationships that I've ever like been in, platonically, romantically, um, romantic, I wouldn't say the last one, but I think I always, I, I be feeling bad, you know? I be feeling bad about, or I always want to give people these chances when they don't necessarily deserve those chances, or like I always see, like, I see that they're trying. So I should, you know what I'm saying? And 
I gotta stop that because it sucks the energy out of me. And especially when it's not reciprocated, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, well, Brandy, why the, why the fuck are you doing that? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's okay for me to say no. It's okay for me to stand firm in that and just not want to do some shit that I really don't want to do. Like, or not stick around for something when people are on bullshit with me in a scenario. Like, you know what I'm saying? Next is allowing less access to me. And I don't know, I put slash being naive. Y'all wrote this list like two and a half weeks ago. Um, I just think in general terms, like that goes back to, I think, people pleasing just in with that. <sighs> and also this swells into this, is that I can be kind but I don't got to be nice. I think with the access thing and just thinking that, you know, just in certain scenarios, things can be cool or like me just thinking it's something else than what it's not. And I'm just like, mm, no, you got to stop being so kind to people. And I'm going to use this example like some months back, like I addressed something with a friend, right? And I addressed it twice. And this was via text. Like, I don't, I didn't feel like it on the phone. Like, it wasn't nothing that pissed me off. Like, but I think it's something that we should have talked about to move forward in our friendship. Like, slight, but it mattered to me. And when I hit them, like, all right, cool. Like, they ignored that portion of my text. So then weeks later, reached out. Um, they reached, no, I think it was their birthday. Yeah, I reached out to them and then. Now, maybe I shouldn't board. It wasn't their birthday that I brought up. I don't know. Maybe it was the next day. Something like that. I ended up bringing it up again because I said something along the lines of, um, like, I'm still mad at you about so-and-so or something like that. And then it still wasn't addressed. And then, like, when they hit me, like, maybe like a month later or something in regards to something else, I didn't reply to the text message, but I felt very bad. But, like, why did I feel bad? I think... I be feeling bad about putting boundaries in place with people. Um, And I don't know why. You know, like, I'm trying to be unapologetic for my shit. And, but when I give you chances, like, it's just like, yo. And even in that scenario, it's no bad blood. We can still be cool. But, like, we got to talk about that. Like, so as of right now, like, no, you don't get to talk to me. Like, we don't get to have conversations. Like, I'm not doing that until we talk about it. But, like, it took me a minute to stand firm and, like, not feeling bad about that. Um, now granted, I do be down on the hill of principle. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> but for real for with that, it's just like, nah, like that wasn't cool what you did. And if you can't acknowledge that with me, what we got to talk about? Mm. So next forgiveness. That's another thing I've done that I've been working on since like the first week of October. I figured out exactly who I needed to forgive in my life. So if y'all listen back on some of my episodes, especially daddy issues, part one, part two, um, other episodes where I've talked about work, um, which that don't got to do with forgiveness, just adding that in a tidbit. That, that has to do with my anger. I've gotten to the root cause of like where a lot of my anger comes from. And I've, I figured out I needed to officially forgive my dad for not being here, not being who I needed him to be, like everything, like everything I just felt for him. I had to, I had to forgive him for that. My mom also for not being the mom I needed her to be you know, and stop focusing on that aspect of our relationship. And then my mom's older. She is who she is. We can't make up for that lost time, but I've been trying to nourish what we have now, forgiving my father figure that was in my life, um, just disappointment, the resentment. So many words go into all those relationships that I just listed, but I know I needed to start there. Um, And I've been working through that. And with that, I've been able to help alleviate my anger because... I don't know, y'all. I don't want to be as mad as I was on those episodes. I don't want things to have that much control over me. That shit is the past. And even when I go into the present, like, why am I leading with anger? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't desire to be that person anymore. So I'm like, yo, we got to work on this. So that's been interesting. Hard, but fun. Um, You know, I just like to keep... I, not I said hard but fun that's crazy not every aspect of it is fun but like I just be throwing different things in there here and there just to you know add that little dash of like funny or fun because like for me when I have to do something real hard I have to I have to have that balance of that and that just makes it a bit 
easier for me to complete. Um, next, and I've talked about this a little bit a few episodes back, but keeping my focus small. I think a lot of times when we want to make a change in our life, you'd be like, ooh, I got to do this one big thing. Not thinking about how much effort that big thing can take, right? What I've realized is implementing small changes in my life add to the bigger picture in my life, period. I got to take my time with myself. The problem is that I've had in the past is that I always want to rush it. But anything good takes time. Anything phenomenal takes time. And I've had to tell me that. I have had to tell myself that. Small changes add to the bigger picture. And I always remember what one of my therapists told me. She, you know, she's like, is your list of things realistic? And did you get anything done on that list? And if you did get things done on that list, you should feel accomplished. And I have to tell myself that because I should. Like, sometimes we just put all these things on our plate and it's just not realistic. Or we're not, let's say, for instance, it's certain things I want to do before I start my work day. Well, am I getting up earlier? Like, you know what I'm saying? What am I actually doing to accomplish some of those things? We have to, I'm talking to myself, I'm talking to y'all. We got to be about it. We can't just talk about it. I want to be about the things that I say I'm going to do. That's why I'm trying to just like, and this is just a slight change. For example, I'm trying to be more intentional with my actions, um, especially before work too, but in general, my actions in life. And it has helped me tremendously so far, like so much. Um, just knowing that like I'm not quote unquote bullshitting when I do things that I actually love or want to do. You know what I'm saying? Because bullshit, I mean, you're not getting no payoff. You it, it goes back to when I was talking about instant gratification. I want to stop doing that. I don't want the instant gratification. I want the lifelong gratification. Lifelong gratification. Um, next, let's learn lessons. So I've just been reflecting on what I learned this year. You know, a lot of times, you know, when life is falling apart, there's always a lesson there, bro. Especially when we get into a cycle or something reoccurring. It's like, no, this keeps happening in a different form because you have not learned your lesson. You just haven't. And I am trying to use that approach with when I know something's going wrong or like I know I need to take accountability in a situation, I got to learn that lesson and I got to figure out how to prevent it. Um, Next, letting go of control. That's been very important because I am a bit of a control freak. Um, yeah, man, literally, especially this year, there have been things that are out of my control that I just let just let me send send me down a spiral, bro. I'm just like, Brandy, be for real. <laughs> Sometimes we stress ourselves out so much because we just add to our plate. We just make shit harder when we don't have to. I have to realize there are things that are 100% out of my control. So what am I going to do to aid in changing the narrative? Or what I'm what am I gonna do to weather this storm? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I it's this TikTok, yo, of Coco Jones, and it's it, it's bookmark. And she was just really speaking on what I need to see, what I needed to hear. She was saying, like, basically, there's different seasons of our lives. And how are you going through the system? Like seasons, like, yeah, you in a season of raining, but like what you doing in that rain? Like. We, life does not stop just because things are going on out of our control. We still got to wake up and be an adult. Oh my gosh, shit hard as hell, especially everything being high right now. Oh my gosh. But we still got to wake up and go to work. Like, we still got to feed ourselves. We still got to brush our teeth. We still got to clothe ourselves. Like, we still got to sleep. Like, there's so many things we still have to do. And I can't be focused on what I can't control. Because now I'm not enjoying the other aspects of life. Because life don't stop. Like, I'm trying to live. and. Mm. Ooh, I'm trying to live. So next, let go of autopilot. <sighs> yeah, there's just been certain parts of me on autopilot that you just let, some things we just let rock because we're just like, oh, this is just a part of me. This is me. Like even the shit that we don't like. But like, nah, like, you really have the autonomy to change stuff about yourself. But it's a practice. You got to get into the habit of it. And that's what I'm learning. 
And it's just like, it's not okay for me to let certain areas of me be on autopilot because then it's like backtracking on all the, the parts of me that I have worked on. And like, we don't want that. We don't want to revert back to bad habits. Um, and it's easy to do that, right? Like when we have fasting and then like, you, you know how you notice you start a new thing, maybe, maybe a thing that you like, and you just like maybe a health thing, you just slack off a little bit. And then before you know it, like you stop doing it. And then you're like, hmm, well, I thought I saw the, I saw the results of that. So I thought it was cool for me to stop. And then ultimately, no, some things are really lifelong, guys. <laughs> oh my God. I have to accept that with the gym. Like, wow, I really got to work out for like the rest of my life. But yeah, some things are very lifelong. But like also too with that, with the autopilot, sometimes we hold on to certain parts of that autopilot. So then we can't fully implement the new thing that we're implementing because we're holding on to that bad habit. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Next. Sometimes you got to realize it's them and not you. So if you walk yourself through a scenario that happened and you like for real, you being honest with yourself, you like, mm, nah, really? I didn't do anything wrong in that situation. You got to know it's them and not you. And I'm telling myself that as well. Because something happened a few weeks back. I'm letting it go. I'm not going to talk about it up here. <laughs> I just didn't understand it. And I talked to a few people about it. I'm like, okay. So I, I get it. I I had to validate my feelings. Like, hey, this is how I this is how I feel about it or felt about it. And that's okay. That was that's my feeling. That was my feeling. But like, other than that, I gotta let it go. Like, cause it's not me. Like, I can't feel bad when I know I did not do anything wrong, you know? Um, and then this one, I don't know, I ended up talking about this before I got to it, but being about it, like, um, if y'all listen to like my episode towards the latter half of last year. Like, you know, I had an episode talking about the four agreements and mind you, I remember the four agreements and then like I've been have, I've had the most sticky notes since I read it. And, but I was realizing I wasn't implementing the, that all throughout my life. I was implementing it in certain portions of my life, thinking that would alleviate it in all aspects of my life. Now, when you say you want to live by something, you have to live by something. And that is what I'm realizing. Like, it's not like. It goes back to what I said a few episodes back, like how I'm looking at me. We're going to call this my healing journey. You know, I think I'm really in my, <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help but laugh at myself, but no, nah, I'm really in my healing bag. Like for real, for real, like y'all, I'm deep in it. Like I'm doing the things that I need to do for sure, because I ain't no quitter and shit I can control is not going to keep me from what's meant for me in life for one. And what I want, like, you know, personality shit and, ha- and like how I live my life cannot hold me back from living the life that I actually want to live. I refuse to let that happen. So we had, we, we got to do a 360, but yeah, go back to the agreements. I got to mean that, right? I got to instill that in myself and I got to, I got to do that on an everyday basis. Um, so that's what I'm learning to not fall back. Even when I feel like I missed a day on something, like, that's okay. So, like, we just going to do it the next day. That balance of accountability without beating myself up, you know? Now, now we're almost at the end, guys. I think I'm almost done. Wow, I wrapped it up pretty quick. But anyways, <laughs> so my ultimate goal for next year, I have a few things on my list. Um, but my main, main goal is, I just want to be free in all aspects of my life and I want to flow through life. And oddly enough, you know how my podcast is called Growing and Flowing? I knew for a fact when that title came to me, I didn't know necessarily why I wanted that to be my title. Now, granted, I know I wanted to add things, connect things to my childhood and all of that, but I don't know. I think I've always been searching for a deeper meaning into why I chose that. And I understand that now because... Ultimately, I think I'm meant to flow through life. Like I've always been, <laughs> I've always been like down for whatever in a in a sense. Like I've always been like, well, why not? Like with stuff, but not in every aspect of my life. And I want to, like, and I've been having, a, I've been adding a pinch of Buddhism to my life. But really, what I what I think about daily is like I have to accept that pain and suffering are a part of life. We cannot control what other humans do. We can only, and I'm not saying fully control ourselves, but we can only control ourselves. We can only be accountable for ourselves. Like, we live this life, right? I got to be comfortable in who I am. 
And I've been working on creating a safe space within myself so I can always come back to myself, right? And being that I know this is me, like I got to feel free in this body that I'm in. And I can't let stuff bother me as much as it used to, you know? So, oh, that feels really good to say out loud, y'all. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. I had something else to add to that as I was saying that. And this has been happening to me all day. I don't know where that thought went. Mm. That's really crazy because I really felt like it was going to be a great ad. Huh. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so I'm also working on too with that when I, for 2023, I don't want to have expectations for things. So like, I want to have in my mind that next year will be a good year for me. And of course I have things that I want to work on, but I'm not too detailed in those things. I think I've had problems in the past of like thinking about exactly how things I'm working on should go. Um, and I don't want to do that. And also, I got to go back to this real quick because I meant to add this. So embracing myself and who I am. So if y'all listen to the episode that I had with Mia um, a few months back, I was talking over there. Like, she's a content creator. She does that full time. And I was talking about it up there. And it's so crazy. I stopped content creating. And I felt then, like, even in that conversation, I felt, I wouldn't say I felt weird. But, like, a part of me was like, eh. I think for a while I had wanted to stop for a very long time. Like, because it was giving not me. Like, you, y'all know who I, how I talk about, like, I've never been wanting to put in this box, but being an influencer is exactly what it do, especially on Instagram. Like, it's a popularity contest. I was just talking about this with somebody. It's just like, I'm just, I don't, I actually don't care that much. I don't give a fuck that much. But I was telling myself, ooh, I should give a fuck that much because what, I'm quote unquote good on it, good at it. And I was only good at it when I wasn't half-assing. And then it just got to the point that I was half-assing, so I know I wasn't in it, but just keeping it up because what, it was something to do. But also that shit made me feel lesser than like so much stuff happened with that that just made me not feel good as a person. But it's just like, yo, if I'm committed to this, okay, that comes with the territory. But I had to have the discussion with myself. Nah, like that's not what you want to do. And somebody told me, oh, when we get back, it was like, I think content creator is owed you. And I was just like, wow. <laughs> but it was so hard for me to come to terms with that. But like, I'm trying to gravitate towards what I genuinely like and in that space it's just like even when it was going well like it just really wasn't me even me popping out doing the makeup thing like you know the videos where you look regular and then like you pop out makeup like well I was like girl you don't even wear makeup like you used to like I really don't like a lot of times when I go out now I don't do any makeup or I do like a real light face and I do my eyebrows um I don't even be wearing lashes anymore which is crazy because I never thought I would be here wow but yeah like and that was just interesting and I was just I had to let that go and y'all I was putting so much pressure on myself and when I made the conscious decision to let that go and like Brandy like stop caring it feels so much better like I don't feel like I'm obligated to be doing stuff like I don't feel like why am I why don't I have a video idea like why am I not doing this not because ultimately though another thing I've been I've been exploring my creativity because I've been trying to figure out what does that mean to me? And I think for a while I've been trying to place it on the thing. Like, what am I creative at? Like, what? A, I think I'm very good at cultivating somebody else's vision. Um, I think I'm very good at putting something together. Like, if I have an outline for it. Or, like, even when I sit down and think about it. If it's something I want to do. Or, like, putting together something for somebody else like them sending the clips and then like I just do stuff like that so I'm just like all right so that's starting to form in my head like and I think because now that I have the idea like eventually like it'll it'll take me somewhere I don't really know what that looks like but like I'm actually just getting comfortable in knowing that in general terms I'm creative when I grew up I just didn't I was never around that like I that wasn't presented to me like I just I never thought that I could be a creative for like in a creative space and the dope thing about drew's product um shoot not product drew's event is that i was around so many creative people and typically i'm not so like i want to be in more of those spaces um so that was cool but anyways back to the, <laughs> i went off on a tangent but back to the opening go yes i want to be free i want to flow through life i don't want anything to hold me back i want to just be and i just want to enjoy my time here while i'm here so yeah y'all 
So I hope that some of those things resonated with you. I hope some of those things make you feel motivated and know that you are fully capable of doing whatever the hell you want to do. Stop sleeping on your potential. And I'm talking to myself as well because I get so in my head. But like also realizing, nah, Brandy, you that girl. Like every single thing that I have set out and put my mind to and have been really focused on to do those things to change my life, I have. I've done every single one of those things. So it's like, girl, why are you sleeping on your potential? Do that thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? I said that at an event and I said it up here before. Do that thing you've been thinking about. Step out your comfort zone because why not? And life is too short. You know what I'm saying? You keep saying, you know, you know, a few months or next year. Well, why not now? Like, you don't always have to have the vision for the bigger vision. You just got to start somewhere sometimes. And I read, I saw this thing that um, Raina Biddy posted on her story yesterday. And she said it was a repost from Twitter. And it was basically into it, like, you have to accept that, like, you have to be a beginner. Like, a lot of times we sleep on ourselves because we don't realize we have to be a beginner. You have to go through the phases of something to grow. Um, so yeah, talking to myself and talking to y'all. So yeah, I will be back in a few weeks. I'm thinking second week of January to start back my regular schedule. So I'm super excited for next year, excited for what's in store. And I don't even know exactly what that looks like. And I am okay with that. So yeah, thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to comment if you like. I'm going to put this audio on YouTube as well. If that's your bag, I'm going to do that moving forward. Um, Don't forget to check out my previous guest episode with Lameek. Um, Also, that visual is up on my YouTube. And then also my full episode with Drew, the visuals are up for that as well. Um, And then don't forget to write me. That helps me with discovery. And I will actually talk to y'all next year.